Hello everybody, this is Gary LeBombard again with video number 8 for uh, the 1973-05 Eagle that we own. Uh, this is where we're starting out with photos of the new design space to be used for the air brake valves and connections. You are now looking at the tunnel area between the drive wheels that I started with that just was one scary mess. It took several days of thinking and cleaning to view what this area can be cleaned up and used for in replacement of the mess you now see. You probably will have to look at this uh, section more than once just to appreciate how uh, horrible it was inside uh, between the wheel wells uh, and uh, how much room I had to work with and uh, what, I, what was I going to do with this area. After much thought, I plan to use this area for the new air valves needed to put my new complete air systems back to work and I was changing over from DD3 brakes to a spring brake system. So to do this I had to have all new valves so I've, I figured I'm going to put them all in this area here and enclose them so that they be there and protected forever. And as you can see in these photos it's very very tight to get in uh, the areas where I had to work and I do all the plumbing necessary to install my new air brake system. All new airlines were labeled to track where they run per my schematic. Here's a couple of close-up uh, photos of the new tunnel area, which will be totally enclosed to protect the new air system uh, completely, including the air tanks. As with everything I've, I've done uh, in the past, uh, this area had to be refitted for my actual use for a piping connection for the air system and uh, lots of brass fittings were used to complete the task after fitting the air tanks on each side of the bus. Notice full enclosure over Eagle drive wheel sidewall and overhead framing was done to protect the undercarriage from weather and debris forever. Notice also that the outer drive wheel fender is completely sealed after installation to prevent water and so forth from getting inside and rusting out the framing uh, the frame as it did before. This was all done on all six wheels. You can easily see how the new air system storage area is protected by the aluminum access doors. The following photos are the fully new installed air system located between the front steering wheels which are also fully enclosed and located in, to protect the air system in the front of the bus the same as in the back of the bus. Again uh, the working area for uh, this air system was very tight to try to install the air tank inside and still connect all the air plumbing. I have only taken two photos of the front of the bus with the assembled access doors to the air system cavity that I have designed for use. Now you're going to see an area that totally took a lot of concentration and determination to keep going on this project after viewing the following photos. Starting out is the actual original radiator screen door that the framing of the door was completely rusted out. This told me something right off the bat. Knowing I have to completely remove the radiator to complete frame repairs if needed, and they sure were, again discouragement takes over this project. And then realizing I have about $40,000 now invested at this moment, counting the cost of the bus, I knew I had to use my ingenuity to bring this part of our bus back to being safe for road use. View all the photos carefully. Even in, in these photos you cannot see what I did and what I have had a, when, and what I had ahead of me and where and I was thinking where the hell do I start? Removing the radiator was a challenge right off as the framing of the bus was welded to the tanks of the radiator from rusting over its lifetime. And I am assuming the radiator was filled with tap water and not distilled water when needed. And this further caused so much rusting when the radiator and piping uh, probably leaked over a period of years. 
I used the assistance of my floor jack to help remove and balance the radiator when I finally did get it out of the bus. And again, this is a challenge to do alone. Removing a radiator without help when it is available, if you, if you can, please do this. She weighs about three to 400 pounds, I believe. Here is the discouragement part of my bus uh, concerning this section, as you will see in the following photos. You will see much frame damage. That is what is most of importance to me. And then some of the main framing of the bus supporting the engine motor mounts, which needed complete replacing. The main bus supporting framing was totally rotted through, as you will see. And that that was not rotted by sight showed failure when pierced with a screwdriver. This took months to cut out and replace to as close as possible to the original design. Only I used much thicker material than was originally used. Look close at this mess here. And, and look at this discovery I just made just using a screwdriver through the side of the, the thing. Look at this one here. This is enough to make you your stomach turn over and over and over. But anyway, and then all this rust, look at the rust that was accumulated between uh, the inside and the outside uh, of the wheel wells. And here's the motor mount area that I'm talking about. Take a look at this here. It's completely rusted out. There's the motor mount that you're looking at right this moment. And there's the accumulated rust. And that was just filled with rust on the inside of the, uh, the framing itself. This all had to be completely replaced. This took months to do. And uh, I, I still get discouraged when I look at it. But I'm so happy that I have to have to do it again. I would never do it again. But I'm hoping uh, this will tell you that no matter how bad your bus is, and mine was the one of the bad, worst, that you can fix it. Because I feel it. I have done that, and I hope uh, you get to see me uh, one time at a campsite or something or on a road where we can visit and everything like that there, and I can show you what I've accumulated, uh, not just in movies, but in person. Finally, I was able to get a handle on this project, and here was my plan of replacing most of the bus framing viewed, as you will see in the following photos. The entire left side of the motor, motor support A-frame had to be replaced, and was I was using quarter-inch wall tubing. Seeing it in place and rough painted was a pleasure to see come to light for me. The finished product looked so much better with paint, and knowing it was all stronger than ever made me, than ever, and it made me feel so darn good. Now you're going to see the left-hand side framing, the main bus framing, uh, on the left-hand side of the uh, the motor A-frame and uh, motor mount A-frame, and take a look at this now. And uh, that all had to be replaced and uh, re-strengthened, and now uh, you can see now it's still replacing it, and uh, you're going to get a good handle on it here in just a moment, uh, how it came out when I got it finally done. Looking on the left-hand side of the uh, <coughs> The, uh, the motor A-frame, motor mount A-frame, uh, you can see how I beefed up uh, that part of my framing of the bus, which I felt that was uh, really structural important. And uh, this is how it all came out. And it took an unbelievable, unbelievable amount of time, uh, welding and uh, planning and everything else. It's just unbelievable. Now I recorded in photos the inspection of my original radiator and I wanted to tear it down to confirm my suspicions of being worthless and it was I tried to core it out but as you can see the amount of calcium and everything that was inside causing so much damage it was decided to just replace this if possible but looking at the framing of the uh, uh, radiator uh, I, I didn't feel that it could be useful anyway I purchased a new radiator from my source in Florida and after getting it home with it I disassembled it and completely cored it out, cleaned the tanks real good, and reassembled with all new hardware needed to assemble it back together again. Uh, and this was uh, at least a three-day job, what I can remember. Here are photos of the original D battery storage area, I believe. Anyhow, I designed this to be used for my new compressor dryer, my power steering fluid reservoir, and access to a cooling fan, which uh, if you look uh, really close uh, in this following picture coming up here, 
uh, in the back you're going to be able to see a fan that I have installed and now this is to help dissipate the heat from the engine when running down the air, down the road and also keep the upper cabin cooler and with uh, with the less fumes now you're also going to see the new radiator door design that has curved cooling fins mounted to help catch air and force it to the radiator when going down the road the fins are designed to move outward of the framing three inches past the outside of the bus to also help catch more air hopefully you'll also see uh, some advanced photos uh, of my new doors I made for the back of the bus which at the time of this video I am just now starting to get ready to prepare for paint now all these doors were hand formed and also you will notice I do not have to I do not plan to have a chrome bumper in the back of my bus any longer these doors still open as did the original ones but are made of steel the drive wheels uh, bogey wheel tensioning rod or adjustment rod as you're looking in the pictures here it's completely ruined uh, as you can see uh, it's bent it's uh, welded all up so it's totally useless it's not adjustable in any way so I had to take this all apart and what a bugger of a time I had <clears throat> but anyway I took it all apart cut it apart figured out how it's going to machine it and how it's going to fix it and everything like that and so uh, you're seeing uh, results here in a moment here as to what I came up with but uh, it was difficult to uh, to figure out well how am I going to fix this thing and salvage it and everything well I came up with a plan and uh, here's some of the parts here that were completely ruined wait to see these two buggers take a look at this look at the crack in that welding over there I mean good grief I don't know who done this <coughs> they must have been some practicing learning how to weld but anyway, I had to take it all apart, and then you're going to see uh, the the end result here. And I had to do a lot of machining to make the rods both new again, and have no sloppy welding holding them both together any longer. And uh, this is what the end result was, uh, what I came up with. And uh, put them back on a bus, and now she's now she's ready to go again.